All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome in to Low. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, of course, we have a great, great action packed vlog for you today. Now, before we get started, let me get out my vlog notes here. First thing we're going to talk about this week, we're going to talk about, uh, I, I did, I did a video on Tuesday. I did released a video on Tuesday that was talking about these new, uh, not new, not new in any capacity, the FDA regulations, man, they're coming. And the response was uh, unbelievable. Um, everybody's on board. People are writing in. People called on Wednesday. I called on Wednesday. It's it's overwhelming. The response has been overwhelming. Let's keep that momentum going. So we're going to talk about the FDA. We're going to talk a little bit about Vape News Magazine. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some more battery testing that Mooch did. Uh, of course, there's going to be beer. Of course, there's going to be shout outs. Of course, there's going to be first impressions. Uh, what I don't have this week is a retro vaping, but what I do have in place of retro vaping is a review for things that never got reviewed. I have an atomizer here that kind of just never made it onto video uh, for for various reasons, this, that, and the other, and it's kind of something I'd like to talk about, you know, right there, just a little bit, but we'll get there when we get there. And of course, like I said, the first thing that I want to start off with is this CASA FDA thing. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, we all need to get on board with this, and I'm not going to repeat anything I said in the video for Tuesday, because I did a video on Tuesday. Everybody should go watch it. It's like six minutes long. It tells you everything, most everything that you need to know. I don't rant too hard. I don't use too many obscenities, but I use, yeah, there's some there's some obscenities in there. No big deal. Um, Kassad just released, uh, in case you didn't watch that video, Kassad just released a new call to action. Uh, we are calling the White House, or we were calling the White House on Wednesday. We're still sending mails and sending emails to support a bill. We're supporting HR 2058. And this is going to change the grandfather date of electronic cigarettes. The, the, as it stands right now, as they're written right now, the grandfather date for electronic cigarettes would be 2007. So that means any vapor products that were on the market in 2007 will still be allowed to be sold and on the market. And I don't know if you remember what vaping and like was like in 2007, because I don't. I started vaping in 2009. Vaping has never been uh, better than it is right now. We've advanced so far as far as juice quality, as far as atomizer technology, as far as mod technology. It's great. And if we can move this grandfather date, then that means the existing vapor products that we use now will still be legal, still be available. Now, that doesn't mean that state and local governments can't just hop in and like, uh, oh, well, we're going to ban this here. We're going to ban that there. You can't vape anywhere, not even in your house, not even in your car. That's that's still going to be an issue. But these are the big regulations. These are the big FDA regulations, man. And you can make a difference. You can. You can get in there. You can put your feet on the ground and, and get in there. And I do believe that. And everybody can make a difference. And I'm not trying to be Tony Robbins motivational speaker, but yes, everyone can make a freaking difference. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. I talked about it on Tuesday. I'm going to link the Tuesday video in the description below so you can go check it out. And I will, of course, in the description to this video, put links to everything you need as far as the CASA call to action, uh, the new FDA dot, FDAregs.info website that uh, Stefan and Not Blowing Smoke have put up, all, all really good resources. So moving forward from that, um, there was some uh, a little bit of drama. And you know me, I loathe drama. I hate it. I just can't stand it because something will happen and people will just jump on it like fucking wolves with pitchforks without getting any sort of explanation or any sort of follow-up or any sort of facts about this thing or this event that happened. So I get uh, I get tons of I get tons of emails. I get tons of Facebook messages. Let me actually try to track down this Facebook message real fast. Let me just try to track it down real fast. Yeah. So a fella named uh, Joseph uh, messaged me on Facebook, and he says, uh, "Are you going to weigh in on the Vape News Magazine Namber full page back ad controversy concerning their October issue?" And I'm like, what? Where? And he's like, October issue, page 18, paragraph four. And I said, uh, I, I feel like that's a typo. Like maybe someone just didn't proofread the article. 
and the, the, the article in question is about how to grow your online vape business. And whoever wrote this article, which was not me, I, I didn't write this article, another potential challenge with the FDA, it says another potential challenge is that the FDA might require vape shops to only serve people 18 years of age and above, removing a large portion of your potential client base. There's this one paragraph that possibly insinuates that the author of this article runs a vape shop and may be selling to kids under age of 18, which if that's the case, fuck him, fuck his shop. He shouldn't be doing that, right? I mean, it says, unfortunately printed, another potential challenge is that the FDA might require vape shops to only serve people 18 years of age and above, removing a large portion of your potential client base. Meaning if, the, if they do this, and you can only sell to 18 and overs, then that's going to remove a whole bunch of your client base. Well, people went bananas on this. And so he replied to me. Uh, he seemed pretty angry. He seems this is all really straightforward. I don't think it's a typo. Uh, I'm sure the opposition is going to have a field day with it. And I said, well, I mean, that might be a little over the top. I really feel like the 18 was supposed to be a 21, and I was wrong about that. So I told this guy, I said, I'll tell you what. I'll contact the editor, Alyssa, directly. Just see what she has to say about it. And he goes on to say the social media in Portland has blown up. They released a statement saying the paragraph was supposed to get cut and that they were not meant to print the whole thing. I'm just embarrassed that it's out there. I have defended against this with my friends of mine all the time. Saying this is a typo is going to sound pretty weak to them. Let's get over to my email here, and I want to read exactly, exactly what Alyssa wrote to me. So I reached out to Alyssa, editor-in-chief, Vape News Magazine. Go right to the source, figure out what's going on here, see if there's any shady business. Now, just as a disclaimer to this, I've been talking to Alyssa for a very long time. I have a column in Vape News Magazine. We advertise in Vape News Magazine. All my interactions with Alyssa have always been amazing. She loves the community and cares very, very deeply about vaping. So I just emailed her and I said, everyone and their mother is sending me this suspicious paragraph that's in our October issue or your October issue, not our, it's not my magazine, it's her magazine. Fourth paragraph says another potential challenge, 18 and over, blah, 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 blah. People are going bananas. I just wanted to come to you directly. Let me know what's going on here. So I'm going to read her response to me and I'm going to, she, she sent me a very, very personal message and there's some things that I'm going to be leaving out just for the sake of her privacy. I don't think she wants, she said, sure, go ahead and read it. I don't feel comfortable reading all of this. So I'm going to leave out some very, very, very personal, personal things that are in this email that, that literally have nothing to do uh, with the rest of the article. So she reads to me and says, ah, so the lynch mob has reached, reached you too. I'm going to share a story with you. My grandpa was a heavy smoker and had half a lung taken out when I was a child, but that didn't stop him from smoking. He was my hero. He was the only one who loved me, and my mom nagged him to quit smoking so much, and all he wanted to do was smoke cigarettes. When I was 14, the chemotherapy began, and at the age of 16, he had died. Those two years of listening to him throw up in agony and sickness, I still cry over him, I still dream about him. I have given the last two years of my life to this cause of vaping, 60 hours in a work week in some cases, with five to 8,000 words of copy written in a day on average. I am a human being and I'm bound to miss something now and then. I can work my ass off for two years and do nothing but positive things, but be threatened with bodily harm online over two sentences. I get it. It's human nature to dwell on the negative and I would never intentionally do something to hurt this cause that gives smokers the chance my dad never had. Here's the official magazine statement on the matter. I'm really sorry that this has reached you. So yeah, Vape News Magazine released an official statement, and I'll link it below in the description. Vape News Magazine sp supports all regulations, laws, and policies that require vapors to be 18 years or older. We recently published an article in our October issue, page 18, with a paragraph that read, Another potential challenge is that the FDA might require vape shops to serve people 18 years of age and above, removing a large portion of your potential client base. We sincerely apologize for running this. The paragraph was supposed to be completely cut out and in no way reflects the reviews of our publication. We are 
investigating our publishing procedures to make sure that this never happens again. We are also taking the following steps to ensure our readers and partners that our stance on underage vaping is clear. We support Safada's Age to Vape 18 and Over program, and we will add their logo to our covers starting in the December issue. We will continue to publish educational articles about best practices, advocacy, and programs to keep minors off of vaping. Matt, CEO, Vape Magazine. That, uh... That's it. That's directly from Alyssa. That's directly from Mr. Matt here, who's the CEO of the magazine. These things happen all the time. Read through any magazine, and there's always, oops, corrections from the last issue. We meant to say that this car does this thing and that and the other, and we accidentally said this. These things happen all the time. You have imperfect people writing articles. You have imperfect people Reading those articles, as Alyssa said, as much as 8,000 words, I mean, that is, that's, that's ridiculous. 8,000 words on an everyday, all she's doing is reading and reading and reading and proofing and proofing. So yeah, something slipped by that should not have been in there. And I don't know who wrote that article. Whoever wrote that article is obviously not a great <laughs> vendor, not a good person, doesn't support 18 and over vaping yet. Of course, of course, of course. Vapors and uh, Vape News Magazine should support 18 and over vaping. So yeah, that's that's that. It's 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 honestly not that big of a deal. It's something that was meant to be deleted, was not taken out of the article, and it went to print, and they printed a retraction and printed a correction. This is something that happens in journalism all the time, all the time, all the time. We don't need to get our panties in a bunch. So moving forward from that. Um, how far are we in? 12 minutes? I do want to get to some beer because, ooh, I want some tasty, delicious beer. That ModWorks battery that I picked up, I posted a picture of it on Instagram. ModWorks battery. Yeah, I got these at the Vapor Dynasty Expo, and they have on the wrapping here, high drain, rechargeable, ModWorks, 18650, 3.7 volt, 2000... 100 ma or milliamp hour ready it says maximum continuous discharge 38 amps 38 amp a miracle 38 amp battery so i posted this on instagram and i was like mooch <laughs> battery mooch let's do this thing so he comes through he uh he posted uh his thing on ECF. Of course, I'm going to link to it in the description. In fact, he saw that post on Instagram and messaged me like right away, emailed me right away and was like, hey, you're never going to guess what batteries I tested. So the ModWorks 38 amp batteries bench test results. It's only a 20 amp battery and basically collapses at 38 amps. Uh, disclaimer, so let's go to his bottom line. That's the best part, that's the meat and potatoes of it. Bottom line, in my opinion, this is an average to decent performing 20 amp continuous discharge current, depending on which cell you look at. There was a, there was a larger than num, there was a larger than normal performance difference between the two cells I tested. Oh, interesting. Its capacity at 20 amps is either only 75% of the 2100 ma, VTC4 or the same as the VTC4. When discharged at its continuous rating of 38 amps, its voltage quickly collapsed. There you go. And he's got battery mooch. He does it up good. He peels the wrappers off so you can see the whole thing. He has the continuous current test results, the graph. <laughs> he's got pulse currents, all these test results. Uh, the MadWorks website discharge graphic, which is completely different than what his, the results for my two cells were very different from the graph at the ModWorks website, modworks modworksco.com. I am unable to explain this discrepancy. The ModWorks website discharge plots look a lot like the ones for the VTC4, but very idealized. Usually at the higher current charges, 25 amps and 30 amps, there's loss of capacity. But the ModWorks graph, the capacity keeps increasing. The ModWork is not a VTC cell, though. The ModWorks has a four-prong cap, and the VTCs have a three-prong cap. So basically, it's a 20-amp battery that collapses at 38 amps. It's obviously a rewrap of something, but I, I and Battery Mooch and maybe the people on ECF don't know what it's a rewrap of. Obviously, obviously, it's a rewrap. And I'm not entirely against rewraps if you are saying what the original battery was. Craving Vapor 
does batteries. They released uh, the Craving Vapor cells or whatever, and they say these are Samsung 25Rs. I personally think that's fine. I think that's totally cool. If ModWorks released this and they're like, ModWorks, uh, MXJO, or, well, the MXJO is a rewrap anyway. If they were like, LG HE4s, these are the ModWorks LG HE4s, and we'll always have them in stock, and that's why we rewrapped them is so, because we want them to be sold reliable. I think that's a great idea. I saw a guy on Instagram whose name I cannot remember for the life of me. He rewrapped some uh, some cells of his, and he put the Grim Army logo on them. And let me try to find this cat right now. Uh, Vep, Vapist KW. He did the uh, the Grim Army wrap on a on a Samsung 25R battery. And that's cool. I want to get Grim Green wraps and sell Samsung 25Rs and just sell them. Say, these are Samsung 25Rs with freaking Grim Green wraps on them. So, yeah, that's that's the fun part of that. I always like uh, Battery Mooch never lets me down. And so I was, you know, I got these. I got those. I got another one for you here, Mooch. Um, Ampure Technology Competition Cell. Uh, 35 slash 80 amp. 80 amp 18650s and i'm getting texted with jawa sounds 80 amp 18650s that's ridiculous mooch ampere let's get on those let's get on those batteries buddy so we're already getting into this vlog we already talked about vape news magazine as well as the fda fda regs.info mooch battery uh the mod works you know what i want to do right now i am thirsty i am parched i feel like going over to the beer section Dang, I look good in HD. All right, so let's taste some freaking beer. Pick this beer up at my local Trader Joe's place. Now, this is a collaboration ale between Stone and Julie Goldberg. I don't know who that is. Julie Goldberg, Julie Goldberg, Stone, and Monkey Paw. They released the 24 karat golden ale. And this is, you know, it's getting to be around fall, not here in Southern California, but the rest of the world. It's getting to be around fall. We're thinking of like pumpkin stuff, apple things and Halloween and Christmas is coming soon and Thanksgiving is coming soon. And so I thought I'd throw this in there. Uh, it was like 12 bucks, I think, for the bottle. No big deal. It's got highly decent ratings over there on the Beer Advocate site. And thank you, Stone. Thank you. No corks because fuck corks because I'm scared of corks but uh, yeah so we're gonna open this up and we're gonna taste it it's got an 85% rating over there on the uh, on the beer advocate and they have no notes at this time it just says monkey paw 24 karat golden ale 24 karat golden ale and so I'm reading this bottle and it says a carrot cake inspired Belgian ale that is that's literally everything I'm looking for in a beer. I love carrot cake. I want carrot cake all the time in my face. Carrot cake. Carrot cake Belgian style ale. I don't think it's going to be very dark. It's like Belgian golden ale, so it's going to be on the very, very light side. I'm going to pour this again, not over my keyboard, into a tulip style glass. My favorite modern times tulip style glass. Yeah. That is light. That is light in color. Got a nice, very white, creamy head on there. I'm going to read what one of these reviewers says. I enjoyed everything about this beer. It's very attractive and relatively small lacing. Not much wispy or sticky head retention like I'm used to seeing from many Belgian pails. Smells of spice, fruity esters, and some sweet aromas. Taste is complex with banana and clove esters from the Belgian yeast with some malt sweetness or perhaps from ad adjunct additives okay very little hop flavor present finish clean and satisfying feels light and clean but not watery finishes dry and refreshing uh, very unique and interesting there is not one factor or flavor that overwhelms another and you can pick up on the carrot cake throughout very inventive I'd buy again for sure all right well here's to you happy Halloween everybody 
Yeah. Oh, it's wow. That that blah blah. There's so much going on. You get a lot of upfront sweetness. Um, there's like a very slight spicy clovey flavor going on. A lot of upfront sweetness. It tastes like uh, an American ale. I don't get a lot of Belgian characteristics from this. It feels like an American style ale. It's good. It's very nice and sweet. You get some really nice, sweet, upfront flavors. Way to go, Stone. 24 karat golden ale. That's great. And I would love to sit here and Google who these other people are. Julie... Ju okay, well, that's not going to happen. Julie Goldenberg. I don't know who Julie Goldenberg is. The Stone blog. Let's Maybe they have an article about this... Uh, maybe they have an article about this particular beer. Uh, nope. Nope. The Stone Brewery website is very confusing. Oh, they have a very long... Oh, this was part of a homebrew competition. Am I reading this correctly? Well, this blog post is dated April 1st. Uh, it's doubtful anyone would take it seriously. Blah, 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 blah. American Homebrewers Association. No, 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 no. Julie, in the end, it was Julie Goldberg, a member of the esteemed homebrew club Quaff, Quality Ale Fermentation Fraternity, and founder of the San Diego Sorority, that took the top spot. She's the first female brewer to win this competition and joins previous winners. Uh, yeah, so this is her... Wow, hey, she's kind of cute, too. So this is her beer. This is uh, Stone Brewed It, and this is kind of her creation. Wow, that's crazy. I'm going to link to this blog post in it. Uh, yeah, carrot, cinnamon, raisins, and vanilla beans. It's a really tasty beer. Now, I don't know that I have anything off of hand. Uh, let me try Yig. Let me try Yig real fast to pair with this. Uh, I do have another option for a pairing. But it's weird. It's a weird. It's a weird, weird juice, man. So let's try. Uh, let's try Yig out with this twenty-four karat golden ale. It's good. That's not a bad. That's not a bad little pairing right there. It's not a bad little pairing right there. Yeah, it definitely uh it definitely bring out brings out that like vanilla clovey flavor. I'm going to try another one that I don't think is going to be quite as good. I've been vaping this juice and we might talk about it in during the first impressions because I'm going to talk about this during the first impressions. But I'm vaping this juice from Craft Vapory. Now, Craft Vapory is weird. Uh it's they just have weird flavors. They have that mango sticky rice that I really really love, but they also have this cornbread juice. Not even joking, it says cornbread on it. And these are the labels with the painted on, or these are the bottles with the painted on labels. Ugh. Pardon me, pardon me. Robin? Stuart? Sorry, Sheik. Cornbread. Cornbread with this? Hey, you never know. Could be awesome. Hmm. Well, that's not bad. Wow, that actually goes uh that actually goes shockingly well together. I think the yig is the best choice right now, but dude, that cornbread uh actually pairs really well with this beer. So yeah, that's what I got. That's what I got for beer right now. Everyone go out and buy the 24 karat golden ale, drink it. Tell me what you think of it. If you have a favorite beer that you would like to see in the vlog or just a favorite beer that you enjoy, let me know in the comments below what your favorite brews are because I always love, love. There's nothing I enjoy more. I mean, there's some things I enjoy more. I love going to the beer section of BevMo or Trader Joe's and just looking for new shit and going, Wow, Stone has a new one. Or, oh wow, look at that one from Firestone. I've never heard of that one before. I want to try it. Love trying new beers. I just love it. And if you have a favorite, let me know down in the comments, and I'll be sure to do my best to try to check it out. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy this beer. Uh, what we're going to do now is go to shout-out time. It's shout-out time. Mm, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. So, shout-outs. First shout-out, first shout-out that I have to do fella named Preston wrote to me and says, uh, Hey Nick, my name is Preston. Nice to meet you. 
I have been watching your videos for a while now, and I always find myself looking forward to, uh, to the vlogs, especially the beer segments, as I'm a fellow craft enthusiast. Try all the Ballast Point brews. I'm actually addicted to their offerings. Funny story, I live very, very close to the Ballast Point brewery, and I go there frequently. I'm contacting as I feel strangely compelled to. I want to send you uh, one of the boards that my company makes. I know you're a fellow music junkie, and that's what I deal in. I am by no, uh, I by no means want anything out of this gesture. I just feel compelled to say thank you in a special way for filling my boring week with interesting reviews and segments on vaping and beer. Is there, uh, if there's anything in the store that tickles your fancy, just let me know and I'll shoot it over. So Preston runs Real Talk Skateboards, and he makes custom skate decks for bands, right? He has a Shy Halud one, which if you've never heard Shy Halud, Dude, listen to Shai Hulu, please. He's got Norma Jean. He's got I Wrestled a Bear once. Oh, that one wasn't on there. I really like I Wrestled a Bear. I kind of want that skate deck, Preston. I Wrestled a Bear. Uh, they're cool. They're a good band, and I like their skate deck. Black Tongue, Bear Tooth, Darkest Hour, Veil of Maya, uh, Volumes, Misery Signals, Norma Jean, Tesseract, Protest to the Hero, Oceano, After the Burial. Wow, he's got this naked chick on a board, too. How do I get that one? How do I get the naked chick on a board? I don't know. I don't know why I said that. So, I was looking through all his boards, and I'm like, there's one that really like, it caught my eye. I was like, wow, that's really cool. It's called the Miss Death Skate Deck. Boom! Can you see how cool that is? Can you appreciate these graphics? There is a skull here at the bottom. Looks like an animal skull. Skulls, uh, a goat right here, and then Lady Death, like she's a grim reaper. There's so much. Let me take this plastic off of here. There might be less... Uh, there might be less uh, reflection. Oh, come on, plastic. What are you, the world's strongest plastic? Oh, yeah, much less of a reflection. You got the death lady there. She's got, like, a scythe, and she's holding a chalice. I'm assuming it's some sort of blood in that chalice, and there's, like, a crow right here. It's badass. This is badass. Orange on one side. Miss Lady Death on the other. I've rearranged my wall back here. I'm not sure if you noticed, but there's a couch, and I've rearranged my wall. I think I'm going to put it over here on the wall, like underneath uh, this Rat Pack poster that's kind of off camera. It'll be in the reviews. It just won't be in the vlog. Maybe I'll put it over there. Maybe I'll put it on this side. I'm not sure. need to figure out a way to, to mount this to the wall, but I just hit myself in the face. Did you see that? I just hit myself with the skateboard. Need to find a way to mount this to my wall, but Preston, dude, this is freaking awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't skate. I know Ruby and her husband have taken up skating. I don't skate, but I really like the idea of custom art on skateboard decks. I think it's super cool, and uh, shit, I'd love to see, I'd love to do great Grim Green skate decks. I think that would be freaking awesome, but thank you, Preston. Shout out to you. I'll post a link in the description to Real Talk skateboards.com uh, uh, in there as well so you can uh, check out all the cool uh, all the cool decks if you're so interested I do have another shout out to do Trey so Trey let me find Trey's email Trey writes to me and says uh, hey Nick how goes it I'm a longtime fan I appreciate everything you do for the community you you're on the road what oh 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 your your and your come on people let's learn your and your you're on the road with the MVP video is what started me with vaping. The reason uh, the reason is I have a t-shirt that I want to send you, but I'm not sure where to send it. It's a shirt from a foundation. I am starting to raise awareness uh, and support for addiction. I started this foundation in memory of my cousin's best friend who passed away in 2014. He was a wonderful person and father, but did struggle with his own demons. I have a website, uh, projectovercome.org, but I generally have more activity on my Instagram, and I'll link his Instagram as well in the description, projectovercome.org on Instagram. It would mean a lot to me and my friends just to hear a shout out uh, and see you in the shirt. Plus, I'm thinking you'll like it. Thanks again for everything, brother. I wish you nothing but success and happiness. Yeah, this shirt right here, Overcome. It's the two fists like this. It says Overcome, and it's got a pair of drumsticks. If you head over to 
project oh no no this is the wrong website had a, had a little bit of a, a rough time trying to find your website there but uh, I eventually got it uh, you can go to projectovercome.org and if you go to their about it says project overcome was created in the memory of our beloved Joseph Smith Joe is a talented musician and loving father who had enthusiasm and passion for life unfortunately he also battled with addiction Joe took steps to overcome his struggle by signing himself into rehab in early 2014 and upon his release he rejoined society with the hope and determination to remain sober. Sadly, Joseph passed away in June 2014, the morning after his 27th birthday. Ah, uh, that breaks my heart. We believe uh, a lack of post-rehab support and resources contributed to his relapse and untimely death. Project Overcome was created with support in mind. We aim to help those who battle addiction as well as their friends and families who wish to assist their loved ones in their journey to sobriety. Uh, it's not our mistakes and struggles that defines us, but our ability to recognize our difficulties, find bravery and beauty in them, and most of all, to overcome. So this this fella, Joe, had overcome tattooed across his knuckles, which is badass. Like, that's so cool. So that's what this design on the shirt is, and he's holding a pair of drumsticks. It's just a cool, you know t-shirt and it supports a really good cause and you can purchase the t-shirts directly from his site if you uh, or anybody you know your loved ones have battled with addiction then this is kind of something cool that you can get involved with and you can we're in the process of making safe and secure online purchases until then please pull out the form to the left and include the quantity and size t-shirt uh, and they will send you t-shirt so check that out thank you so much for sending that my way I got an extra large I got an overcome shirt and absolutely I'm gonna wear this shirt uh, I'm gonna wear this shirt I'm gonna wear this shirt proudly and I don't know why I repeat myself like that I repeat the same thing over like just then I was like I'm gonna wear this 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 shirt proudly I don't know why I don't know why I do that. It's just uh it's just uh it's 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 just uh something that I do. Absolutely Trey, consider yourself shouted out. I'm going to go way back here into July now. Like I said, I get a lot of shout out requests and I try to fulfill them as as often as I can. This one goes all the way back to July. Uh she wrote to me, I don't know her name. Uh Shaka Shana. Why did I think there was a K in there? Shana. Um, I wanted to give uh, a shout out to my husband, Chris. I'm so proud that we were both introduced to vaping last December where we fell in love with your show. My husband watches you every week and I think he would love a live shout out from you. He now uh, builds amazing custom made box mods and is soon and soon will be making them for the shop here in central Wisconsin. I'm so proud of him. He helped so many people quit smoking along with us, and that is just amazing. He needs the praise. He is the father of four beautiful children, and the youngest was our miracle baby. She had a very rare lung condition, and we had to get her left lung surgically removed and lives with her right lung only. That's the most badass baby on the face of the planet. Quitting smoking was crucial, and we are... Uh, Proud to say she is always saying my daddy is working on his box mods. That uh, That's amazing. Again, please give a shout out to my amazing husband, Chris, from Wisconsin, uh, from his wife and kids. Absolutely, Chris, consider yourself shouted out. Keep making box mods. Sell the hell out of those box mods in Wisconsin. Shout out to you. Shout out to your kid with one lung. That's I mean, that's amazing to me. So consider yourself, consider you both of you guys, consider you both of you guys shouted out. Now, I did have one more shout out that I wanted to do. Ah, yes, this, this came to me from Aaron. So this one came in today and it really kind of just, oh, the feels just hit me right in the feels. This fella named uh, Aaron. He writes to me and says, hey, Nick, we've spoken before. I just wanted to tell you my story. So you can maybe possibly give me a shout out for prayers for my father and possibly mention my YouTube for me as well, if possible, so people know where to, where to talk to me. I'm going to make a video for him soon after I travel to Arizona this weekend. Um, so he wrote to me and says, uh, okay, so the story goes, eight years ago, my family, my father was diagnosed with stage four cancer. He quit smoking cold turkey and quit drinking as well. He went through chemo for two years and had a stomach tube and everything. I quit my job to help him with his company while he was weak. He was 100% cancer free for five years until recently. 
This past Thursday, October 22nd, I found out my father has cancer once again and worse than before. It is very aggressive. I'm so sad we may lose him this time. He has now had it in two different spots and needs all the prayers in the world for this one. I just don't want to lose him, and I'm so worried. He cannot eat anything anymore. He has to have a stomach tube put back in this week while I'm there so he can eat something because he is in too much pain to eat. Maybe you could find it in your heart uh, to do a shout-out and talk about him. Anyways, I'm really worried about my mom because she is alone there with him and I'm days away to drive out there six hours to see him and spend Halloween with him and take my two-year-old son and wife out there to spend as much time with them as they can before things get any worse. Cancer makes me so disappointed. I really try to help people quit smoking and it makes me feel great to help people and get another hit like this. <sighs> Aaron, that's, I mean, that's, that's horrible. I I can kind of imagine what that's like. I can't really imagine what that's like, though. That's insanely heartbreaking. Shout out to you. Shout out to your dad, uh, your mom, your family, everything you're doing. Um, he runs uh, Vapor Function LA Official, and I'm going to link in the description to his YouTube, um, just because I said I would. But uh, yeah, Vapor Function LA uh, over there on the YouTube and over there on the Instagram. Obviously, Aaron, my heart goes out to you, as I'm sure anybody watching this video, heart goes out to you as well. I can't, I can't even imagine. Like I said, I can't even imagine. All right, so moving forward, I think that's all the time I have for shout-outs uh, right now, but we've already talked about a lot. We've already, we've already done beer, and we've already done shout-outs, and now I have a sweet... Uh, I got a sweet skate deck. So anyway, let's... Uh, Let's move from that. Let's do some. Uh, let's do some first impressions. All right, shit, fuck it. Let's do some first impressions. I just realized I might have had my microphone off that entire time, and that really upsets me. But moving forward, luckily my microphone's on, so we're all good now. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm not crazy. But I do have some first impressions to do. I just don't remember in which order that I wish to do them. Uh, so first, so first up. First up, what should we do? What should we do first up? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do the Relux. And this is one, uh, it's either called the Relux or the Relo. Relo. Relux. Anyway, this is from uh, J Bo Designs and Wimsec. I always pronounce it wrong. I always pronounce it wrong. Wismec. Wismec. Wismec? Sure, Wismec. Jabo, Jabo. So Jabo is the creator of the Tobe. He made the Tobe, and he made a couple other uh, atomizers. The Derringer didn't D Jabo do the Derringer, but anyway, Jabo's been around in the community for quite a while. He's been doing uh, mods and modding and stuff like that, and he has teamed up with or created. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Some mods and some atomizers that are being fabricated in China. And designed in California, fabricated in China, a lot like an iPhone or something like that. And one of his devices is this. And I'm just going to call it the Relax. The Relue. I hate the name of this. R-E-U-L-E-A-U-X. The Relo. The Relux. I don't even know. I'm going to call it the Relux because I'm an American who doesn't know how to pronounce things. But anyway, the Relux is a DNA 40 mod, and it's the DNA 40. Good Lord, Nick. DNA 200 mod, and it's the first DNA 200 mod to use 18650 batteries, which is interesting because if you read the DNA 200 spec sheet it says it needs three lipo batteries in series but this is using three 18650s in series interesting right overall it's kind of uh it's kind of really nice it's got like this two-tone gray color it's got a light gray strip through the middle dark gray on the front dark gray on the back the door is magnetic you just pull it straight off it's on there actually pretty snugly. I mean, there's no way you're accidentally, there's no way you're accidentally going to pull this thing off. There's two little tabs. You pull it off. There's your door. It feels, it feels very, very solid. Very like you, no way you could like crush this. Three 18650s it runs on. And then there's a ribbon in there. Let me just pop these out. There's a ribbon in there to get all your 18650s out. And there's the, uh, sort of looks like a plastic housing in there and it shows you which way your batteries go so the back to the positive goes down right like this and then the front one oh gosh wow this is a uh, 
Hmm. Anyway, the front one, the positive goes up and your ribbon goes kind of interwoven throughout. You can pop the front one out. That's no worries. And then you use the ribbon to get the last two out. Positive goes up and then it all fits together just like that. And the door can only go on one way. One, two, whimsec. 70 watts. So this is running on his new indestructible RDA. It's a single you, look at the vapor production from that. Team single coil, bro. That is a single coil uh, fused Clapton running 0 0.4 ohms at 70 watts. The vape on it has honestly been freaking perfect. Great flavor, great vapor. Actually, I don't know how I feel about this atomizer. We're not, I'm not talking about this atomizer right now. I'm just not sure how I feel about it. This is the Jabo Indestructible. And it has weird post holes. They're just big square cutouts where one side of them isn't even attached. So you kind of have to capture your wire with the screw. It's, it's interesting. I need to spend more time with it. Fuse Clapton seems to work really, really well because it's nice and wide and you can get captured by the screw. I've been having a really good time with this device. I've been charging it via the USB. I don't, haven't been taking the triple 18650s out and replacing them because quite honestly, I have one one set of three 18650s that are married, that are actually a set of batteries. You always want to marry your batteries. And this is left over from what meet was that where I got the triple 18650? Anyway, I bought three 18650s and that's the pair and they've stayed married this whole time. And that's why I'm using them in here. They're LG HE batteries and they're, they're really, really good batteries. I've been really enjoying this. I really like the shape of it. Do you see this interesting shape to it? That's the shape of it. And it just fits in your hand so well. And it feels a little bit clunky, maybe a little bit big, but it's a triple 18, 650 DNA 200. I have not seen any DNA 200 devices using a, an 18650 triple 18, 650 battery. They're all using lipos. It's nice. It's interesting. I'm wondering if the 18650s can really hold up, can really hold up to that wattage. I've been rocking it at 70 watts. I've been getting a fairly decent battery life, plenty of power. Plenty, plenty of power. Uh, Spring-loaded 510. One thing that I want to do, one thing that I'm going to keep an eye on while I'm using this, and like all my first impressions, I'm going to need to spend much more time with this, is the finish on it. So I was reading somewhere that they use a zinc finish and that over time even within about a month's time that a zinc finish although it's cheaper and looks really nice can degrade quicker interesting right i don't know i don't know if there's any truth to that uh, i know that it's coated inside and out with basically the same paint same finish on there i'm interested to see how this holds up over time and when i first got it i didn't quite know what was going on i didn't realize that the magnets are just what held on the back and so i started unscrewing these screws and i'm like how do you get the batteries out of here nope back just pops off back just pops off batteries go in like i said i've been getting fairly decent battery life i've only had this for like a day now maybe two days at the most it uses three 18 650 cells uh temperature control variable wattage up to 200 watts i mean it's the dna 200 it's temperature control it's 200 watts of power spring loaded 510 has vent holes on the side oled screen the up down buttons charging port it's got a nice soft clicky little button jabo did a great job on this button one two three four five it's locked now jabo did a great job on this button it's just the perfect amount of click it's a very very low profile on there this is a nice mod this is a really nice mod and i don't know how much these are going to be sold for so i don't know the price i'm imagining it could be as high as 200 bucks just throwing that out there could be as to as high as 200 bucks. I don't know. I don't know how much it's going to cost. It seems like designed in California, manufactured in China, the price would be a little bit lower, 150 bucks, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much it's going to cost. All I know is that it's a joy to use. It's so freaking comfortable to hold. I love it. It's, I love this little stumpy body. I love the shape of it. it just fits in your hand so well. It's just great. And the button, oh, the button, Jabo, really nice. 
Really nice. So yeah, I'm going to need to spend more time with that. I'm especially interested in the finish of it. And I just dropped the door and it's somewhere under my fucking desk. Ugh, I'm not even joking. That door rolled like six solid feet away. But anyway, I need to spend more time with this. I feel like it's a pretty cool little device. I'm interested to see how the 18650s hold up at the higher wattages. I've been trying to, trying to rock it at higher wattages. I mean, 70 watts, eh, that's... That's pretty high. It's not like 200 watts, but it's still, it's it's on the high side. Spring Loaded 510, haven't had any problems with it. Uh, I think it's great. They do have a little thing on here. Main features, three replaceable battery cell structure. Note, please be careful to not use batteries with torn casings as it is a safety hazard. There you go. Multiple ventilation holes, yeah. Multiple ventilation holes in the top, multiple ventilation holes on the side. I'm assuming that's to keep the temperature of the batteries or the temperature of the board down. Not necessarily that if your batteries vent, I mean, they're not going to vent out of these tiny little pinholes on the bottom. I'm assuming that's for, yeah, you can blow air in there. I'm assuming that's for like airflow to keep the overall temperature of the overall device down. It has a reverse polarity system for batteries. If installed properly, the plastic hoop will prevent the battery from touching the opposite contact head. That is that is actually a completely amazingly good idea. That's the simplest, smartest idea I think I've ever seen. Charging, you can take the lithium ion batteries out of the device to charge the cells. Moreover, it can be charged via USB cable, and that's what I've been doing. I just got into the habit of charging my DNA 200s with the balance charger that uh, that Vapor, not Vapor Shark, Volcano eSig sent over. I've just been charging all of my DNA 200s just like that, just like we used to do with the MVP, just charging it. Overall, I've really been having a great time with this. The buttons are clicky and nice. All the buttons are clicky and nice, fits so well in your hand. And there's only really one way to hold this. You hold this with the door against your hand and you hit it with the button. This isn't a thumb device. It could be a thumb device. It's just half, it's like a quarter as comfortable as a, with a thumb device. No, I don't even want to use it. I don't even want to use it like that. I just want to use it like this and hold it and press it with my finger. Um, been getting mixed reactions. Some people are like, wow, that's really gorgeous. Some people are like, ugh, I would never use that ever in a million years. But yeah, it is what it is. And it is the relux, the relux. I can't pronounce anything from, from Wismec designed by Jabo in California. Uh, it's cool. Like I said, I'm going to need to spend more time with it before I do a full review follow up. But, uh, but yeah, that's the win. That's the, that's the relux. Now for something that's much easier to pronounce, we're going to move to Jabo's other device that he's releasing through the same company. This is the noisy cricket. Look how adorable this little thing is. It's got vent holes on the bottom, very cool like mid-century stylings on the bottom. It's a full mechanical series box. And I don't know why no one has thought of this before, but it's kind of amazing. It's got a very springy little detonator style button right there. I've got the, uh, what, this is the, uh, what the crap atomizer is this? The Solstice. That's right. It's the Solstice. And this is the atomizer that I did. 14 wraps of 24 gauge Canthal came out to 0.5 ohms on, on a series box. It's fantastic. It's, it's just fantastic. It's a fan freaking tastic vape. So let me juice this up real fast. I'm going to take a couple drags. It's ingenious. This mod is kind of ingenious. Now, if this mod is more than a hundred dollars, uh, I mean, come on, this is being, this is, this is the most simple. It's, it's like a tube. Okay. It's like a rounded tube. Okay. And there's a little teeter totter kind of here on the bottom. This battery goes in positive side down. This battery goes in positive side up. It's a hybrid connection on there. And then you have this little squishy plastic button. It's a joy to use. It's completely comfortable to hold. A whole mess of power. 0.5 ohm build on a series box is just a wonderful vape. The ramp up time is just non-existent and you just get warm, flavorful, delicious vapor just directed into your mouth hole. 
Still not sure how I feel about this cornbread juice. I keep vaping it, so I guess that means something, but it's such an odd, odd little flavor, isn't it? So yeah, there's, uh, there's one downfall to this device, and it's so simple and so minimalistic. You need a flathead screwdriver to unscrew the button, okay? Unscrew the button. Button comes right out like this. Just like that. And then here's your button. Just like that. It's a simple little moving contact in there. Battery one comes out. These are sub-ohm cells for some reason. I have a lot of sub-ohm cells, okay? So I'm using them. I don't fucking, I don't love these batteries. They were just charged, okay? So don't judge me. Then your atomizer connection comes off. And sometimes it's, uh gets a little stuck in there. If you have weak O-rings on your atomizer, that comes off. Same idea, getting juice all over my fingers. There's a hybrid connection right there, gold hybrid connection. Then this battery comes out, and that's all it is. You can hear the little teeter-totter in there. So you put the, the battery, it doesn't matter which side it goes in. It's multi-sidal. Does that even, is that even a word? It's multi-dextrous. I don't know, whatever, you're gonna put your atomizer on, you put that positive side facing up, and then you screw your atomizer down. That's the first step. Screw your atomizer all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, and hopefully you get juice all over your fingers in the process. Mmm, cornbread. Then, you take your other battery and you put it positive side down. This one was positive side up, this one is positive side down. Then you take your switch, and you just screw it on there. And you can actually screw it on there with your fingers. I just use a screwdriver to kind of get it the extra, extra fast way. Till it's snug. Just till it's snug. And then when you press the button, vapors happen. It's cool, man. It's really, really cool. This is gonna be my go-to banger. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take this to VPX in New Orleans. Maybe along with that other Jabo one. Uh, no, um, that's a lie. I'm gonna take the Magnus. I'm gonna, the Magnus, the Magnum. I'm gonna take this and the Magnum, I think. We're gonna talk about the Magnum in one second. I'm gonna wrap this up. As always with my first impressions, I need to spend way more time with this device, see how it holds up in the real world. But dude, it just looks so cool. That's a 22 millimeter atomizer, 22 millimeter diameter here. From this angle, it just looks like a stumpy tube mod. And then it's this little great thing. It's the Noisy Cricket. So before we get to the Magnum, I want to talk about this freaking atomizer. So I got this atomizer. What's the name of the company that makes this atomizer? United Machining Inc. This is the United Chaos RDA, okay? Let me just give you a slight size comparison. Let me hold this up. This is the dot mod, dot mod RDA. We all know how tall it is. It's about that tall. It's not an overly tall atomizer. It's not an overly short atomizer. This is kind of in the middle of the road, 22 millimeter diameter. Look at this beast. Do you see the size of this atomizer? It's gigantic. This is a gigantic atomizer. It's 24 millimeters around and it's, it, I mean, it's so tall. It's so tall. Look how tall this atomizer is. So this is the United Chaos RDA and it is weird, boy. Let me tell you, let me tell you how weird this is. Uh, I'm gonna post a picture on Instagram, or I may have already posted a picture on Instagram. No, I'm gonna post a picture on Instagram of this deck. It's got a really interesting deck. It's got an insanely deep juice, you know, what do they call that? What am I, what am I, why can't I think? It's got an insanely deep juice well, insanely deep juice well, and it's got airflow all over the place, including an airflow channel that runs into the side and through the negative post. There's also airflow that goes in through the bottom and comes out the positive posts. There's airflow all the way around it. You can see on this cap, airflow all the way around. And then there's even more airflow holes around the very top. So there's a center ring of airflow holes and airflow slots. And then there's even more airflow slots along the top. It's 
insane. It's really, really bizarre, man. And so the way that I've been doing it is I've just been rocking all of the airflow slots open. So you have to line up this slot with the side airflow hole that goes into your negative lead. This one will be lined up as well that goes into the other negative lead. And then you have one, two, three, four, five big airflow holes across the front, five across the back, and then a whole ring of airflow holes along the top. Now let me put some juice in this. I put a dual fuse Clapton in here, and the post holes are drilled all the way through to accommodate for this airflow. So when I first built it, I was having issues with it clipping my leads because, and ideally you want the inside of your post to be flat and your screw will come down and hold your wire against the deck or against the post, right? That's ideal. But when you have a post hole with a hole through it and your wire's coming in like this and that screw comes down, it's just gonna press it into that hole and that creates two points right there, two cutting points where it's just gonna clip your leads. Just clipped it. I tried it with 22 gauge, just clipped the shit out of my leads. So finally, I put a dual fuse Clapton in there and that was wide enough to actually not, uh, not run into any issues at all. The deck itself is super easy to build on. In fact, he includes an, his own Allen key that's like a big screwdriver. It's not like this big, but it's a big screwdriver with the proper Allen size on it. That is amazing. More vendors need to do that for sure. So let me take a drag off this monster. Look at this monster. Oh, one more real quick thing. You have to take this off to drip because the drip tip is screwed in to the top. Excessively screwed in. It goes way down in there. There's two O-rings on it and then the drip tip is flat on the bottom and then there's a series of airflow holes all along the sides of it. So your air's going in and then up and around this and then into your mouth and then there's airflow going in through the top, in through the middle, in through your post holes, and then through this, and then up. This is not a flavor atomizer by any means. There's an obscene amount of airflow. The airflow to adjust it is just, uh, it's just, it's just weird. It's just really awkward. There is a serious learning curve to adjusting the airflow of this atomizer. It's so airy. It's just so, so super airy. And big. It's just airy and big. So let me try to close some of these airflow holes off. There's one, two, three, four, five along the front, five along the back. How do I do this? Let's see. I could cut off. Let's do this way. No, let's do that way. So now I'm using four, using four airflow holes in the front, four airflow holes in the back. It's a little bit better. It's not a flavor atomizer. Um, I'm trying this new juice, Nerd Core. I'm not quite 100% sure what it's supposed to taste like because I'm not getting really any amazing flavor from this atomizer. It's very, very airy the juice tastes very bland it is what it is it's the united chaos it's got a really interesting deck it's got really interesting airflow the o-rings aren't fantastic they're a little bit on the twisted messes side they're just a little bit like nothing really going on there yeah i'm gonna have to get this fucking pliers to get this off. You can't just grab the top and unscrew it using the, you know, using the cap of the RDA. Anyway, obviously, yeah, I'm going to spend a lot more time with this atomizer. It's been really, really fucking bizarre, dude. Just a really bizarre atomizer. Really bizarre atomizer. So the last thing I want to talk about before we get to reviews for things that never got reviews is this. Now this. This impressed me from the second that I got it. And granted, I've only had this for maybe 24 solid hours, maybe 48 solid hours. This is the Magnum 357, and it's designed to be gunish. And if you remember, there was that other 
mod that was designed to be gun-ish, and that was actually using the handle of an AR. This is a custom fabricated Delrin body. It's got these wood inlays in there that are screwed in. One thing that I've noticed is one of my inlays sits very, very flush, and this one has a slight little edge like a little ridge on it and like it's warped or something like that doesn't really bother me it's just something i noticed the button is designed to look like a bullet casing it's a dual 26 650 dual 26 650 come on nick get your head in the game dual 18 650 fully mechanical mod fully mechanical mod let me get some juice on here and i put an atomizer on here with freshly charged batteries and the damn thing was just hitting so hard and i make it a point to never be like oh this is hitting so fucking hard i'm gonna say it this thing is hitting so fucking hard i just i just loved it now i got a little i got a little experimenting and i took it all apart but let me tell you about that in a second oh man it's good it hits hard and it just tastes delicious. Good. It's good and it's hitting hard, man. It is hitting hard. Now, I got a little curious and I decided to take it all the way apart. So the way that you have to get your batteries out of here, kind of a pain in the ass. There's three screws along the bottom. You unscrew these away from the battery contact right so these are your battery contacts so you unscrew those away from your battery so now you can hear your batteries rattling and then you unscrew this front screw almost all the way almost all the way and then this comes out okay it's just a little slidey piece it just slides in there just like this and then you have to screw them all down but this just slides out see how all the screws are kind of flush down there batteries come out I'm thinking there has to be a way to take this apart so that you could service the switch in there right so here's what I discovered yes there is absolutely a way to do that there is a screw down there the very center way down there I need this long screwdriver to get in there so I unscrewed it this top 510 connection comes out and this is not a spring-loaded 510 it's an adjustable flathead screwdriver 510 that you adjust you unscrew that this whole top portion this whole round sort of bullety looking portion comes out it's flat on one side and all that's happening is there's a spring-loaded trigger over here of a contact that's coming back and hitting this this brass portion right there really super simple design so far it's been hitting amazing seems really easy to take apart and wash the and clean off the contacts to keep it hitting hard parallel so your batteries go in both positive side up this goes back in here like this and then we screw it all together now that it's all back together it just it just works it just hits really hard i'm interested to see you know things like how long it takes for that battery or for that contact in there to maybe get a little bit dirty, maybe not quite hit as hard as it was when it was brand new, how easy it is to actually get in there and clean your contacts off, what kind of maintenance it needs. I'm kind of worried about these screws on the bottom. In the event that your battery overheats or shorts out, it's not a hybrid connection, so you, you can't hard short your batteries using the atomizer. You know, if your batteries start heating up, how quick is it going to be to quickly unscrew all of these with a screwdriver and get your batteries out of the mod. I mean, these are concerns. These are things I think about. My first impressions of this, it's pretty freaking great. If I was to do a review for it right now, I would be like, this is the best dual parallel box ever, fully mechanical. I absolutely love it. I think it's amazing. I think it's fantastic. But I'm not doing a review for it now. I'm going to be doing a review for it later, so I might run into some issues later. Uh, as it stands, that is still bent and warped on there. It's not a very good perfect fit and finish, but I will post a link in the description to vapenaked.com where this came from. 170 bucks. I'm not sure. I'm not sure right now how I feel if it's worth $170 or not. Obviously, I need to spend more time with it and be warned that when you go to the Vape Naked product page, they have a YouTube video that auto plays really, really loud because that's not annoying at all. 
I'll have a link in the description to vapenaked.com where you can pick this up or check it out if you're so interested. Uh, I So far, I freaking love it. I need to spend way more time with it, though. Reviews for things that never got reviews. All right, reviews for things that never got reviews. So for one reason or another, this atomizer just never... I don't know. It never quite made it to YouTube. I had it and I liked it and then I didn't like it and then I hated it and then I liked it and then I didn't like it and I put it in a, in the dead zone. I have an area <laughs> I have an area over here on this there's a little table back here that you can't see, but it's where I store a lot of mods that are kind of uh waiting to be used. It's where you know, uh, something will come in and I'll use it right away for a really long time and then something else will come in. So this will get put over there and it's like, when it goes to the table, that means it's it's soon to be up onto YouTube. That's that's what that means. And so this Aeola sat over there and it's black and I just kind of kept missing it. Like I'd look over there and I'd be like, yes, this is what I need to review next. This is what I need to review next. This is what I need to review next. And the Aeolus just sat and sat and sat and sat. And then today I'm looking at it and I'm like, huh, this Aeolus V2 is quite old and I never did a video for it. So... It's going to get a review for things that never got reviews. Now, the protruding 510 pin on the bottom of this is obscene. It is excessive. Really ideal for, like, hybrid mechanical mods. But when you attach it to something like the lava, the lava box, it's just not going to sit flush. The spring-loaded 510 connection won't allow it to sit flush because that bottom pin is so protruding. So... The build I have on here is 0.3 ohms, that's 80 watts. Looks like it's glowing pretty good. What I'm going to do is wick this and vape it. And as I'm fiddling with this, I was realizing what bothers me about this RDA. And it's the reverse threaded cap. So the Aeolus V2 has threads here. So you screw it down. Fuck, that's hot. You screw it down to your atomizer. And then you, this, this, the, the body of it, the, you know, whatever, the cap of it has reverse threads. So you go counterclockwise to get these on like that, right? But then if you go too far, you just start taking off your atomizer, right? That was causing me leaking issues. And I took off the O-ring on here and replaced it with the black O-ring that they included, and I couldn't screw the cap on. So then I went back to the blue O-ring, was able to screw the cap on, had a bunch of leaking issues right out the bottom of the atomizer. Just leaks like crazy. Leaks in between this cap and the base. So what I discovered that I need to try to do is really crank this down on here as hard as it'll go, as hard as it'll go without ruining your 510. And then you can screw this on here and make sure it's nice and tight, nice and tight, so that when you screw it all together, it's going to be nice and tight on there. And I shouldn't have done that because what I need to do is actually wick this. So let me take the cap off. Now, I love the Aeolus version 1. I like the top-down airflow. This keeps the same sort of top-down airflow. The airflow comes in from the top and the sides, goes down to your coils, and then straight up into your mouth hole. So let me, uh, let me wick this real fast. Let me just wick this real fast. Now, as you can see, the Aeolus deck, there's not much there to work with. There's no juice well to speak of, really. It's like a couple of millimeters down there, but it's got nice big post holes, nice big sort of oblongy square post holes. This is a 24 uh, gauge build on there. Came out to 0.27 ohms, like I said before. And I'm going to wick this. And all I've ever done is I build them off center like that because it's a three post design. It's a three post deck. So it's generally easier to build off center. I just have the wicks come down and kind of go underneath. There's no real place for the wicks to go. I'll show you when I wick it. So I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that. But what I did on the smaller side was I tucked it underneath. You can see over here, I tucked it underneath. And then on this side, I just cut it flush with the edge of the atomizer and kind of 
left it puffy over there, maybe squished it down just a little bit, but I kind of just left it puffy over there so that this side is the only side that's going under the coil and this side is free to be big and, and puffy and fluffy. So now what I can do with those wicks out of the way is reverse thread on the top cap, reverse thread it on. Oh, that's good. That's that's good. That's going to be nice. Um, the top cap on this with the blue O-rings that they include was always very, not weak, just really easy to take off, which is kind of a plus. That's the way that I like to drip. I do that on my dot mod all the time. I pop this top off, then I put my juice in, then I pop this top back on. Let me grab a drip tip real fast. Yeah, that, that teal like aqua blue drip tip dot mod looks really cool on there. So I'm just going to throw some juice in there. This is McFly from Derplet. I think it's their cereal flavor. Uh, I'm not 100% sure as to what this flavor is supposed to be, but I think it's a, I think it's a cereal flavor if I'm not mistaken. So what I'm going to do is juice this up. Let's let it soak in just a little bit. See if it produces. Ah, it's producing the vapors. So I'm going to line up these air flows with kind of where my coils are, roughly. Let's try this out, Two point, uh, 0.28 ohms at 80 watts. It's good, wow, that juice is not very good. Bummer, oh, I'm sorry. I get like this weird like beef jerky-ish flavor from it. That's really bizarre. I think it's their cereal flavor, but it tastes like beef jerky. Anyway, no big deal. I get spit back in my mouth from this atomizer as well. Uh, it's, and I don't know if that's because of my build or because of the way the airflow is. The airflow on the Aeolus V2 Pro is very, very open. Uh, when I was using it, I used to have to try to close off the airflow a bit just because it was too intense. I'm going to close it down. Oh God, so much better. About halfway. See, I really like that. I actually really, really like that vape right now, but it makes it louder. <coughs> too tight. Airflow's too tight. Airflow's too tight. Okay, maybe the airflow was a little bit too tight on there. For some reason, there's certain juices nowadays, and maybe it's just because I'm a wuss. I'm not really sure what the story is there. There's certain juices, there's certain flavors and juices. I notice it happens with strawberry. It hits me weird in my throat, and it makes me cough. And that never really happened before. Uh, and it's just certain flavors. And it doesn't matter the nicotine. Like I can vape six milligram and be fine, or vape three milligram and be fine, but there's just certain flavors. Sometimes it's custard, sometimes it's strawberries that just kind of hit me in, in a weird spot and, I, and it makes me cough and I can't vape them. Open that Aeolus V2 Pro Airflow all the way up again. Uh, it's actually a better, it's actually a better vape this way, but it's just, it's just very, very open. So yeah, Aeolus V2 Pro. It's a cool, it's a pretty cool little atomizer. It's got some weird quirks to it. The best way that I've found to use it is to build it, wick it, crank the deck down on whatever you're using. Just crank it down on there and then reverse thread the cap on and then pop the top on and you shouldn't run into very many issues. Mine was still getting really leaky and to combat that all I was doing was kind of dripping less. But the reason that I liked the Aeolus V1 so much was that I could accidentally over drip sometimes and it wouldn't leak. Like that's the appeal of it. The airflow is so high, you can just not look and be like, yeah, I saw that and just dump juice in there. Just bleh, and it wouldn't leak. Now it's the same, you know, it's the same designed atomizer, except now I have to be careful about how much juice I'm putting in there because it leaks the airflow. I don't know. I really used to like the Aeolus V1 airflow. I don't think I'm really fond of this top airflow anymore. I like the, uh, what was that one that Watofo did? The Saper, where it went in and down. This kind of is the same thing. I just don't know. I'm not really, hmm.
Weird. Interesting. Interesting how vape tastes evolve over time. It's okay. That juice is not great, and I just never kind of reviewed this, and here it is. It's okay. Here's my final thoughts on it. I'm going to wrap up every review for things that never got reviewed with the final thoughts. When I first got it, I really, really liked it. Over time, it started leaking out the bottom. And over time, I found myself not enjoying this airflow as much. And I wish it came. The Aeolus V1 came with that, like, uh, you know ring at the bottom. It was like the vulcanizer. It was like a heat sink that you plugged your atomizer onto and then you plugged it on. Now it doesn't come with that. It's just flat. I do like that it's low profile and I actually do really like the way this looks. I actually have an Aeolus V2 spare. It's a copper one that I'm probably going to pack in a box and give away to somebody. It's fine. It's a really fine atomizer. The deck is really easy to work with. It's a little bit wonky to wick but it's not impossible. It's not like a deal breaker. It's not so weird that I could never use it again, but there you go. It is what it is. Aeolus V2. I'm just really not a fan of that juice. No big deal. No big deal. You know what? Variety is the spice of life, so you can like or dislike whatever you want. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this vlog up, uh, but not before. That's right. I have to do my last segment. All right, Mr. Comment of the Week, where are you? I've been collecting these, and I have a few saved up that I think I'm going to disperse over the next couple vlog videos. But this one, I was reading through them today, and this one I thought was just uh, especially funny in the light of everything that's going on right now with the FDA and trying to va get vaping legitimized. Realize this is a fucking life-saving product, okay? People are like catching shit about it being a mouth fedora and how we're trying to look cool. I got news for you, rest of the world. We're not trying to look cool. We're not trying to be hip or trendy or fashionable or, you know, at the peak of popularity. We're just trying to not fucking smoke cigarettes. And if you're a smoker, you understand how hard that is. And if you're not a smoker, you need to zip it because this is working for us. Wow, that was a, a little rant there. Porkchop, Mr. Porkchop writes on YouTube. Uh, I don't remember exactly what video this was on. I think it was on my quick and easy coil build tutorial. Porkchop wrote in and said, WTF, did I just fall out of a cow's arse vaping? WTF, blowing, blowing fucking smoke? WTF, fuck, get a life, people. Vaping? What a load of shit. <laughs> I love my favorite thing about this. My favorite thing about this comment is he wrote WTF with no question mark. Like, it's not a question. Usually WTF is like, what the fuck? But he just wrote, what the fuck? And like with an exclamation point. No question mark, just an exclamation point. What the fuck? Anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. Pork chop. Your your feedback has been invaluable to the vaping community. So that's what I got. That's what I got for this vlog. I'm gonna wrap it up. I uh, got a lot of stuff coming up. Headed out to VPX in New Orleans very very soon. Headed to Ireland after that. I think I think I'm gonna do a travel vlog for New Orleans, and I think I'm just gonna take a lot of pictures in Ireland. That's where I think I'm, I'm headed right now. I have to choose one or the other. I only have a day in between those two events. And I think I'm going to shoot a travel vlog for VPX. Shit, I might just end up doing both. I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. What would you rather see a travel vlog for? I'll leave it up to you. Would you rather see a travel vlog for New Orleans VPX where people that you know are going to be? Dwayne's going to be there. Kent, Squid Dude, New Age Cleopatra, Ilea, all the buckshot. Everybody's going to be there. Or... Would you rather see a, a travel vlog to Ireland where it's mostly just Ireland and I don't know anybody over there and I'm terrified to meet people that I don't know over in Ireland? I feel like Ireland could be kind of fun. I feel like New Orleans could be kind of fun. I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know what I'm going to do. But uh, a lot of mech mods, a lot of RDAs, a lot of box mods coming up soon because that's what vaping is. Again, let me know in the comments what your favorite beers are. I'd like to, I'd like to try them out. And uh, please, don't forget, take action. Head over to Kassad.org. Head over to NotBlowingSmoke.org. Head over to v FDA Regulations.info and fight for your vaping rights to steal a line from Ruby Roo. What am I going to grab? Let's grab this. Let's grab this gigantic fucking United Chaos RDA. That's what I got. This has been the vlog. Uh, you're more than welcome to join me every Monday for the Monday double feature. Uh, and that's when I do reviews in the week. That's not a vlog. What am I talking about right now? I am hungry. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, yes, let's keep on vaping. You know, one of my favorite things about using this new, my uh, my old microphone is the uh, the wind filter that goes on it when you blow vapor through it. It's kind of my favorite thing ever. <laughs> God, I love that. You want to do it again? Because I kind of want to do it again. I love it. I love that. Holy crap, I love that so much. All right, now we're done.